Hi, my name is David Trinkline, Adjunct Associate Professor and State Extension Specialist at the University of Missouri. First of all, I think it's important to note that tomatoes and most vegetables are a fresh food product. In the terms of food safety, food safety specialists call for a kill step that essentially would heat the food product warm enough to kill all microbes, bacteria, and so forth. Fresh tomatoes don't go through a kill step, so it's extremely important that we adhere to proper sanitary conditions. This begins in the field or the home garden and extends through the packing shed and ultimately to the place of retail. There are two overlapping set of rules that if one follows, you will be in good shape with regard to doing about everything you can to guard food safety. They happen to be the Food Safety Modernization Act, which is an FDA program, and Good Agricultural Practices, or GAP which is like the organic movement, government sets regulations, but it is not a governmental program. But nonetheless, if you follow the FISMA or GAP guidelines, then you're going to be in good shape with regard to food safety. First thing we probably need to ask ourselves is, well, when do we harvest the tomatoes? There's been a lot of discussion as of late with regard to how much sugar and acid can be added to a tomato after what's called the breaker stage. The red arrow next to number two indicates what in the system of grading is called the breaker stage. And that simply means that color is starting to break through the green tomato at the distal or blossom end. This progressively ripens until we get to stage six where about 90% of the tomato is showing red pigmentation. And that would be at the stage that we would call vine ripened. There are those who think that there really isn't any more sugar or acid added to a tomato fruit after the breaker stage and ripened perhaps in a packing shed or so forth. But late research has aimed itself at volatile flavor compounds and their influence. So sugars and acids might be said to influence taste, whereas the entire eating experience, which uh, would be described as good flavor, involves both sugar and acid, as well as about 20 volatile flavor compounds. So vine ripened tomatoes really are what the public demands from a commercial grower and what most home gardeners would aim toward as they develop peak flavor in their homegrown tomatoes. That said, there are two types of fruits with regard to ripening after being picked. Climactric fruits tend to ripen further after they are picked. The ripening agent is ethylene, which we'll discuss in just a second. They continue to produce ethylene until they reach what's called the climactric point, at which time then the production of ethylene as well as the table value or eating quality of the fruit go down rather rapidly. Contrast that, if you will, with the non-climactric fruit, the citrus would be a good example, or in the vegetable world, pepper, which do not ripen further after harvest. They produce minimal amounts of ethylene. So if we're picking tomatoes at less than vine ripen stage, we're relying on this plant hormone, ethylene, to continue to ripen it. Ethylene is a gas in nature. It's a byproduct of natural respiration. And uh, it tends to act as a snowball effect when ripening climactric fruit. The more ethylene is produced, the greater, the faster the amount of ripening. The faster the amount of ripening, the greater the amount of ethylene produced. And I think you'll get the idea. So if we're picking vine ripened tomatoes, our objective in storage should be to minimize ethylene production. And we do that by storing them at a somewhat cooler temperature and uh, as such in boxes or so forth where the ethylene produced will uh, be evacuated and not allowed to stay around the fruit. 
If uh, you are picking them at the breaker stage, then ethylene is artificially introduced in a ripening chamber to allow the tomato to turn red, uh, further ripen, and ultimately soften. Uh, a few suggestions with regard to handling tomato fruit during and after harvest. Vine ripened tomatoes bruise very easily. As we know, they're primarily water. The epidermis or the cuticle is rather thin and they tend to bruise uh, quite easily or puncture with the thumbnail or some other uh, cutting object very easily. When we pick tomatoes, we should gently twist and pull. Now, there are tomato growers who insist on letting the stem, or that's the petiole in the tomato, but on the other hand, that just is an invitation or when packing them for that petiole to puncture the tender tomato and perhaps cause a storage rot to set in. So better, in my opinion, to remove the petiole, and that most often is done whenever you twist and pull upon picking the tomato. We never drop or toss tomatoes into the picking container. That is uh, a temptation, especially commercially. Carrying a heavy container is a bit laborious, but tomatoes harvested should be placed carefully in the tomato picking container and not tossed in. Shallow containers are preferred for picking. I have seen many, many growers use five gallon pails, which probably hold about 35 or 40 pounds of tomatoes. Think of the pressure on the bottom layer of tomatoes if a five gallon pail is used. Instead, shallow containers, such as the one pictured here, which perhaps hold two or maybe three layers would be preferred. These usually are plastic, they can be sterilized easily for reuse, and they're stackable so that you can, in the sorting shed, stack a number of layers of these trays without bruising or crushing the tomatoes in one layer. So again, with the idea that tomatoes bruise easily, we never pack tomatoes tightly into a picking container. Again, using a shallow container and filling them loosely would be what I would call a best management post-harvest practice. The containers are then taken into a grading shed if we're a commercial operation, and upon grading, they're usually dipped or washed in a very dilute chlorinated solution, and that's about 150 parts parts per million of chlorine, and this can be done just by adding bleach and then dried thoroughly. Wet tomatoes or wet produce of any type are an open invitation for storage diseases, which we'll talk about in just a second. The tomatoes are boxed or packed according to grade and size in most retail outlets. The three sizes are large, extra large, medium, and small. And the grades would be number ones, number twos, and then culls or canners bring up uh, the rear of the third grade. The FISMA regulations suggest that we have to track our tomatoes if we sell them commercially, or shall I say be able to track. So that said, there are labels available that we put on the commodity, in this case tomatoes, uh, stating when they were harvested, perhaps when they were packed, and so forth, so that we can always look to recall where they came from should there be a problem somewhere down the line with regard to food safety. Tomatoes should never be refrigerated. The ideal holding temperature after their vine ripened is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and that would be in an air-conditioned, where the air condition is set rather low, but nonetheless a non-refrigerated unit. You, you will find that if uh, tomatoes are refrigerated, they get very soft very quickly, and their storage life is reduced dramatically. If our Objective is to allow for additional ripening, that is to say you pick them before the vine ripe stage, then an ideal ripening temperature is in the neighborhood of about oh, 72 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, that would foster the production of ethylene, which tends to lead to further ripening, but it would not uh, essentially cause the tomatoes to break down rapidly because they've used all of the substrate, and that would be sugars that are going to maintain them 
during storage. It's important also to periodically, hopefully our tomatoes are not going to be stored that long before we market them, but to check for storage diseases. The uh, picture shows right zopusser rot, which is a fairly common tomato disease. Most of these cause the sudden collapse of the tomato fruit. Some are caused by bacteria. Those usually collapse a fruit more quickly. Others are caused by fungi. And the fuzzy nature that you see in the photo would be the fruiting bodies of the rhizopus fungus. And uh, you open up a box of tomatoes that have been infected and you see nothing but masses of uh, the fruiting bodies of the fungus. And you ultimately can trace that back to one tomato that was infected and rotted and to be sure, other tomatoes alongside, just like the old adage in rotten apple spoils the whole bushel, is going to spoil. There might be some salvageable tomatoes in this lug, but on the other hand, they have to be gone through very, very carefully for the sake of not trying to market anything that has been diseased. Again, if we back up to that packing shed practice of washing or dipping our tomatoes into a very dilute solution of bleach, chlorinated water, that should help to eliminate the uh, presence of any disease organisms that cause these storage rots. This concludes my presentation on post-harvest care of tomatoes. Quality sells. If you're a home gardener, quality is why you raise tomatoes, maybe along with saving a bit of money, but quality sells. So as commercial tomato growers, we want to do everything we can from the time we plant the tomato until the time we actually market it to maintain the highest standards of quality possible. And this would include going through some of the steps that we have outlined in this presentation. I thank you for your attention.